Hello everyone, my name is Saumin Soman. I'm a cloud solution architect with Microsoft. In this demo, I will show you the monitoring capabilities of Azure Arc enabled Kubernetes cluster. With Azure Arc, the Kubernetes clusters and servers are given a full-fledged Azure resource ID. This enables various scenarios that simplifies management and monitoring of these resources from a common control plane in Azure. For Kubernetes, this enables scenarios such as deploying an application through GitOps-based management, applying Azure policy, or monitoring your containers. With the help of Azure Arc, you can set up a unified monitoring for all of your Azure Arc connected Kubernetes clusters. In my demo setup, I have already provisioned a Kubernetes cluster in Google and created an Azure Arc enabled Kubernetes resource for the same using Azure Arc Jumpstart Automation. Once you are done with the setup, the GKE cluster will be represented as a first class Azure resource. For this demo, I have also enabled the Azure Monitor with the Azure Arc enabled Kubernetes cluster. Here is my GKE cluster up and running. You can also see that there are some agents running in this cluster to send the data to Azure Monitor. And here is a Azure Arc for Kubernetes resource running in Azure. And you can see the status as connected and it is, it is connected to the GKE cluster and infrastructure is showing as GCP. Now let's dive into the monitoring capabilities. You can access the container insights from either from the Azure Monitor Blade or from the Azure Arc enabled Kubernetes instance. I'm in the Azure Monitor view and under the Azure Monitor view, there is a section called insights. And once you click on the containers, that will take you to a view of all the Kubernetes clusters being monitored by Azure Monitor. Here you can click on Monitor Cluster section and you can see all the Kubernetes clusters currently connected. In my demo, I have only one Kubernetes cluster, which is the one that I have provisioned in Google. Here you can see an overall cluster status summary. The nodes column indicates the status of underlying nodes within this GKE cluster. This view also shows the number of user pods and the system pods and their health status. This will help you to give a high level health status of your Kubernetes cluster in a single view. Now let's dive into the detailed view of this particular Kubernetes cluster. Here we can start our investigation by starting with the cluster view and then to different hierarchy like nodes, controllers and containers. Before getting into the contents of these tabs, let's talk about some of the global filters available up top. You can filter on a time range to focus on a recent time period of data or you can choose at a past time range. You can also filter on specific service, node, node pool or namespace. First section shows the node, CPU and memory utilization in average, min and different percentiles. This view also shows the number of nodes and pod counts. This will help us to understand how is the overall nodes and pods getting incremented or decremented based on the capacity requirement during auto scaling or deployments. Example, if you see a high number of pods in post in the pending state for an unexpected period of time, then this could be a reason of the cluster is having difficulty scaling up your nodes quick enough. In general, this view answers questions related to poor application performance because of infrastructure limitations such as CPU or memory usage and shows them in relation to scaling operations that are being performed. Now let's take a look at the report section. Reports will help you and your team to create customized reports based on different metrics. There are many ready-made templates available to start with. For the demo purpose, I'm going to choose uh, under the resource monitoring, I'm going to choose a kubelet. And I, once I get that open, you can see there are different types of parameters available to filter. In this case, I'm going to choose last 48 hours of data and we'll see what are the insights that we are going to get. And you can see an overview section and then there is an operations tab and performance. Once I click on the operations, it is going to show you the number of operations happened on the last 48 hours. You can see there are 27 create container operations happen and there are three pull image and all of them were 100% a success. Now let's take a look at the performance tab. Performance tab will give you an insights about the CPU and memory and it's a utilization on that particular time period that we have selected. Now let's have a look at the nodes view. 
Each node is a root of a tree where you can expand and see the pods and containers scheduled to run on that specific node. This gives you the flexibility to compare metrics at the node level and to see what's running on it. You can also filter based on CPU and memory metric here. You can also see some of the details about the nodes on the right hand side. This is a property panel. Here you can see some of the basic properties as well as some detail about the local disk capacity and the labels available for that specific node. Now let's take a look at the controller's view. Controller will give a different perspective of the resource utilization of the Kubernetes cluster by viewing at the controller level. In this case, you can see that there are a number of replica set controllers are available. And now if I want to filter, I can also go ahead and let's say I want to see all only the detail from a specific namespace. In this case, I'm going to choose, let's say a default namespace. And then this view is going to filter only for that specific namespace. So this will help you to narrow down to your analytics into analysis into that specific uh, namespace and you can dive onto it. All right, finally, container view shows a container specific resource utilization. Same as other types, you can see the properties and in this case, you can see some of the environment variables as well available for the specific container. If you want to dig deeper, you can open the analytics in the query editor. I'm going to click on view in analytics and click on view container logs. That will take you to a query editor view. This is pretty powerful feature that will be helpful to work with the collected data and create your own graphs and reports. For the simplicity, I'm going to create a new query. And if you're new to this particular query editor capability, you can go ahead and click on the queries button on top. And then for the containers, click on containers. And here you can see there are a number of ready-made templates for the query available. So here I'm going to choose the container CPU, which will help us to find the container CPU usage averaged over 30 minutes. I'm going to click on load to editor. This will create a query that we need to use for getting the CPU utilization. I can go ahead and click on run. This will show the report in a tabular format. If I want to see a chart view, I can click on the chart button over here and this will render the same data in a chart format. Once we have it get rendered, you can easily pin this one into a dashboard and you can share with your team. In this demo, we saw the unified monitoring capabilities of Azure Arc enabled Kubernetes clusters. I hope you have enjoyed this demo. If you want to get notified on new videos like this, please feel free to subscribe to Azure Arc Jumpstart YouTube channel. Thank you so much.